Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolades at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury333, with more exhibition matches. And today we're going to start out with a match between Flipstip and Hokomoko on Isle of Grief. So, this is a pretty typical map, and Flipstip going for a fairly typical start with the gunships. Although, admittedly, last time I cast an Isle of Grief match, there were no gunships. And Flipstip's going for Nat Banshee! Yes! I've never seen other people go for Nat Banshee. I love the Nat Banshee combination. Honestly, think it's underused. Flipstip going for that right out of the gate as a cheese, while Hokomoko with the light vehicle set up with a lot of darts, too. No, sorry, two darts. Not a lot. Looks like Hokomoko going for the five scorchers, which will probably mean an attempt at a calm dive. At this point, though, Flipstip with the... Oh, boy, that start. That Nat Banshee start, that's basically just stun out everything and then kill it. That's, that's the whole point. The Nats work as a force multiplier for the Banshees, so that the Banshees are able to deal more damage and not get killed. More importantly, not get killed. It's the it's longevity is really the point. Now, Okamoko, curiously also starting in the low ground. It makes sense for a light vehicle factory, but it is a little unusual. Also, to start with a light vehicle factory, that is a little unusual on this map. I'm thinking they're probably just considering the size of the thing and the possibility of a gunship start, and they were right too because flipped at finding Hokomoko not in their normal starting spot. But it has been spotted, yep. They're aware of each other, they're aware of what the other is doing. And now we will see Nat and Banshee actually working out in a nice combination here as they go for the commander directly, because why not? There's not much else to go for. Except maybe... maybe the Scorcher? Nope. The commander's being stunned out. Banshee's not going to be able to kill it in time. Even with two Banshees, I don't think it's going to be able to do a proper kill. Like, the commander's not going to remain stunned. And now the Banshees aren't really going to do much, and... Flipstip, what are they building? They got power. They have resources. That's about it. The Banshee wasn't going to do much. Very curious approach. I really would have gone, like, stun out the commander, sure, but then kill the Scorchers. Get rid of them. I mean, at this point, Hokomoko, it's kind of been made clear that they're going for a lot of Scorchers, but of course they are. They're going for Light Vehicle Factory. You always go for Scorchers as Light Vehicle Factory. That, that's pretty much a matter of course. So I'm not really sure what Flipstip has planned at this point as a response to that, because I think Flipstip... What are they going to do? Build more stuff. What else would they do? Maybe build additional defense towers? I mean, they have one Lotus, that's about it. That's not enough. I, I think a commander dive is most likely on the way. Only three Scorchers though, so no, that's not a commander dive. Not a successful one anyway. Probably Hokomoko's expecting Flipstep's actually expanded quite a lot around. Like that was, that was just a diversion that attack. But no, that was basically it. Flipstep's entire strategy was hinging on an attack like that. And it didn't work. Given that, I'm not really sure what to expect here. I mean, Flipstep will continue to try to do what they can with Banshees, but at this point, I don't really have much confidence. Gotta be honest, this is not working out as well as they would like. And one Banshee on its own is not going to do much. Trying to go for the Mason, but that damage is not going to work out. Not really managing any full kills. I mean, the commander was damaged to half health. This mason's damaged to half health. Apparently, Flipstep's getting lag issues, which apparently is an issue with the new engine, so I can kind of see what's going on there. But that's disappointing, actually. Because normally, Flipstep... Flipstep's a good player. Like, Flipstep is quite competent, which is why I'm very surprised why how this is going and everything dying the way it is. So, yeah, lag makes sense. Not being able to respond to the game and all that. I can understand that. Very disappointing, though. Very annoying. I mean, like, as a play like, for Flipstip, it's disappointing for them that the game is not working as well as it could be. Really weird. At any rate, Flipstep now switching over to the more economic build, and Hokomoko going for pure anti-air. They actually... Well, they have a Mason, that's about it. They are expanding very forward, though. Wow, Hokomoko is being rather aggressive with their expansions. They can afford it. I mean, they do have anti-air. They have the Crashers. Well, a Crasher. Okay, that's a bit risky. Gotta be honest, it's actually a little bit risky because those Banshees... I mean, one Crasher, yeah, that'll probably distract or dissuade two Banshees from going in, but if there's more stuff built, one Crasher is not going to cut it. At any rate, though, Hokomoko, not really threatened at this point. I mean, Flipstep is focusing on expansion. They don't really seem to care much. Actually, they are going in, and no, the Banshee's not dissuaded, although at this point, Flipstep, I really think it is a matter of lag because they're just... They're coming with the Banshees, and the Banshees are being left to die in silly situations. It's probably, it's gotta be some, I don't know exactly what, what kind of lack, if it's the CPU usage is too high, or there's some frame rate issues, or if it's actually network lag. 
But that would explain a lot about why things are committing suicide. Because that shouldn't happen. Like, especially for Flipstop, especially with how few units there are, it just doesn't make sense. And Flipstop with a light vehicle switch. Double light vehicle switch, in fact. They apparently were going for one over here at point, one point. But yes, they had the light vehicle switch. They have a bit of an economic disadvantage. Hokomoko definitely getting on top of that. And... There's not much more to... I mean, Hokomoko is basically just going to be coming in with these Scorchers and managing to wipe out most of what Flipstip has built. And then when that happens, well, that'll be game. I mean, Flipstip, they are switching to light vehicles. They do have the factory now. This will be their shot of getting in. At least, probably going to go for Ravagers. No, Levelers. Yeah, Ravager or Leveler and Slasher. Stuff that doesn't require a lot of micromanagement. Stuff you can just put on Fight or put on Move, and it'll do its job. That's what Flipstip needs right now. That's what they want. I mean, there's no reason to go for high micro units when you don't have the ability to actually micromanage them because the game won't let you. Very annoying, but it happens. So, Flipstep dealing with that fairly intelligently. Can't really say I have a problem with that, so that's good. Still, it kind of sucks that Flipstep lost that early attack. I mean, I don't think there were enough Nats and Banshees, but still. Nat Banshee is a combo I don't see a whole lot, and it makes sense, but maybe I'm missing something about how it works cost effective when the like, cost effectiveness wise. It may just not be worth it. Although, like I said, at this point it's totally not worth it. There's not there's nowhere to really go. And there's quite a lot of anti-air. So there's preparations that have been made, and like I said, Flipstep switching entirely to a pretty low micro ground army. Not sure why they only had the one leveler though. One leveler will not do a huge amount of work. It'll do some stuff. Like, it'll it'll help. It'll deal some damage. It's not bad. It's not terrible. But it's not the best thing in the world. Flipstep really will want to have something a little bit more... Well, numerous. Really, levelers are fine. You just need quite a few of them. For basically this many Scorchers, I would say probably about five or six levelers. The Slashers will help, but yeah, five or six levelers easily. And Flipstep going for Blast... Black Dawn. Oh, I keep saying Black... Blast Wing for those... Going for Black Dawn. These have become a bit more popular in the meta again. We saw them last time as well, and they are... Actually, I think we saw them in the tournament a few times. And I'm not surprised. I mean, they're good. They're just kind of tricky, because targeting them... Because of the way their missiles work, you need to be very careful of how you target them. Otherwise, you're going to miss with all the missiles, and that's of no use, really. So, we'll see how those work. It really is just going to come down to how well those missiles are aimed, where they're aimed to, and... If they hit, great. If not, that's 900 metal that has not done anything by that point. It would be a rather disappointing thing to have happen, but hopefully that does not happen for Flipstip's sake. They can at least get a few hits in, because at this point, Hokomoko... Hokomoko's taking over the map. Flipstep needs to get back map control if they want to get back into the game. That's really what it comes down to. Not much more about that. And Hokomoko going for the air switch. Hmm. Air switch for light vehicles. Probably gonna go for Swiss, just in case more anti-air or more air comes in as an anti-air contingency. And of course it works as anti-ground as well. Probably though, Thunderbird. Because why would you go for an air factory unless you go for Thunderbird? That's the, that's the reason you built the air factory. Like the entire point at this point in the meta. Uh, no 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 no, never mind. Ravens? Ravens, really? No, oh, it is Swiss. I was right the first time. Okay, we are not gonna see, at least not at first, a bunch of paralysis. That is not surprising. Like I said, I expected Swifts get rid of any gunships that might be coming up and also deal with ground units because that's what Swifts do as well. Not super effectively. I mean, there are better options for cost. But in terms of overall just flexibility, no, they win. And actually, the one level are doing really better than I expected it would. Wow, I was undervaluing them. And at the same time, Flipstip's attack over to the eastern side of the map is doing wonders, and we also have the Banshee over here just harassing into the western side of the map. So Flipstep basically just assaulting on all sides, trying to get some... any momentum, really. Unfortunately, the Slash is going down to Ravagers, but I don't know how much Flipstep cares. Because that leaves the Black Dawn available to get through to these Ravagers and tell them to take some damage and not actually be threatened in any meaningful way. Never mind, that actually isn't all that useful. But what about the Crasher? Nope. Metal Extractor dies, though. So that's 75 metal out of the 900 that the Black Dawn kind of needs to pay for itself. And more if it ends up dying in enemy territory, which it most certainly will at this point. And at the same time, 
Another ban- that harassment banshee does go down. It did deal some damage, did get rid of the mason, which is good. It needed to do that, and the Black Dawn just being pulled back into friendly territory to at least be reclaimable. Because the Swift's gonna come back and finish it off right now. There it is. With the boost, getting rid of the Black Dawn. It is- it is a wreck in, in friendly territory, so at least it can be reclaimed, but that is a bit of a shame. Didn't manage to do all that much. The Rapier should be a lot more successful, though. Much less risky, having homing weapons and slow. They are a good option. Black Dawn, I'm not really sure why that's being used. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a particular fan of it myself. And, okay, Phoenix is coming in. I mean, this is a thing that can happen. Yes, you can actually bomb gunships with planes. Not, however, working all that effectively, as can be seen. With one Phoenix going down and none of the Rapiers taking pretty much any damage. All that damage is basically from the Defenders and the Crashers, so... Yeah, good luck there. And the western side of the map, Flipsip's actually managed to take back these metal extractors. So there we go. Flipsip getting themselves back on the map. They're getting map control. They're getting some resources to work from. Actually, come to think of it, if they take these metal extractors, Flipsip should be able to get pretty much everything. Because that'll give them an extra... Oh, they had reclaim as well. But yeah, that should still give them an advantage. Like, a small economic advantage. At worst economic parity. It'd be down to reclaim by that point. The map would be evenly split. And, of course, down to harassment as well. And Hokomoko going for a few ravens. Uh, okay, not a few ravens. Six ravens and four phoenixes. Hokomoko wants to kill something. Probably going to kill the commander. Although, I don't know if killing the commander... No, killing the commander is going to be awesome. Actually, that's going to be a huge deal. If that commander dies, there goes the expansion hopes. Like, Flipstip's ability to get economic parity will be completely thwarted. And there they go, the... Phoenix? No, there they are. Okay. Raven's coming in to flip. It's commander getting rid of it. So there go the expansion hopes, at least for an easy expansion. There's still the possibility of throwing a wasp in there or a mason in there. But yeah, as far as easy expansion goes, Hokomoko pretty much put a stop to that. At this point, Flipstep does have a decent amount of reclaim to work with, but no real workers nearby to work with it. Like, 2,000 metal worth of reclaim. Kind of in no man's land. Surprisingly, nothing's going for this, though. Like, the Wasp should be able to get it. Where's the Wasp, anyway? Ah, there it is. Yeah, that Wasp could easily get the Black Dawn over here. 300 metal, that's something. I mean, hey, the Black Dawn got killed in friendly territory. Gotta take advantage of that. But it looks like... I think Flipstep might still be worried about lag and probably not focusing too much on everything. I mean, if it's CPU lag, if it's frame rate lag, yeah, I could, that would be very difficult to focus around and multitask. Though, I think I found before that Flipstep's weakness is multitasking. I mean, they are definitely trying, or having at points in the game, trying to make sure that Hokomoko has to worry about a lot of different things and trying to tax Hokomoko's multitasking abilities. But at the same time, they've all been suicide attacks. So, a little bit difficult to hold that over a long period of time. At any rate, Flipstep still does have some command over the western half of the map here, the western expansions. I doubt they'll be able to do a whole lot of damage from there, though. And that's the thing, is there's so many units that are coming out from Hokomoko right now, and not a whole lot of anti are coming in from Flipstep, and another Black Dawn as well. I don't really understand the point of that. Yeah, more Black Dawns. Getting a chainsaw on top of that just to try to help. I mean, it will. Somewhat. Won't really help with the expansions over here, but it will stop the main base from being assaulted by air units. Not that that's been a threat thus far, but of course, it could very well happen, and it would be the next logical progression. At this point, Hokomoko should be able to just clean this up. I, I mean, Black Dawn coming in, it's not, able, it's not gonna do much. I don't understand the Black Dawn. It doesn't really do all that much, but apparently it's popular. And once again, it's gonna die in friendly territory, so at least that's another bit of reclaim. And the Wasp's in position, so it can actually die productively. And maybe be turned into units that are more useful. Assuming the Wasp actually survives the assault here. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I mean, there are a lot of units in the factory, but apparently flips to... Okay, yeah, Tridents. They're a thing. They're kind of the go-to thing for anti-air. Actually, I'm a bit surprised they also forgot Crashers. Their, their anti-air seems to have been Slashers and Static Defenses, and then not even many Slash... No, they do have flash Crashers. Never mind. Only a couple Crashers, but they do have them. Ah, five Crashers. Okay, never mind. They're, they're good for Crashers. They're good for anti-air. But yeah, now there's Reclaim that the Wasp can more easily get. Anything can get, really. I mean, it'd be nice if it was gotten. Because right now, those Black Dots have not really been doing all that much. 
Ow. Hey! Some turnaround! Flipsip might actually be able to get this. There are a couple masons near the western expansion, so it might make up for the commander dying, and all that reclaim has been taken, too. I mean, Flipsip needs that- wow. Really needs that reclaim. Holy crap. Oh yeah, they just lost that expansion in the center by the- well, in the lower section. In the flats. Underwater. They did lose that. So they clearly need some reclaim. And they're getting quite a lot of it, too, which is good, but still. Eesh. That is tough to deal with. Hokomoko's reclaim is a bonus. Flipsip's reclaim is necessary to stay alive. At any rate, once this expansion is back up, it'll help, but even then. Hokomoko just getting four... Wow, how many... How many bombers are here? So there's, at this point, nine ravens and three phoenixes. I think the ravens, obviously, more relevant in this case. The phoenixes are doing work, but... Ravens are really the popular choice. I mean, at this point, honestly, I'm kind of surprised this has not happened yet. Hokomoko could basically just split all the ravens. I mean, probably it's not happening because they're trying to use the ravens defensively. But they could split all these ravens. There's so many ravens. Nine ravens for about ten or so metal extractors that belong to Flipstip. Yeah, this could be pretty easily done. Okay, there's a bit more than that now. It's like 13. But still... That would get rid of most of Flipsip's economy, and there's not a whole lot of defenses. Not for a suicide run. Like, these are pretty much safe. These are dead. The ones in the main base are probably dead. Actually, no, 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 they're probably safe. The ones back here are dead, although getting through the main base is a bit of a problem. So with the right queuing, with the right direction going on, that would probably do the trick. And other than that, I think that's about it for this. So basically, if Flipsip can come in here and just rush in with a few with all the Ravens on a suicide mission, that would wipe out Flipstip's entire economy. Hokomoko would be able to win pretty handily, although at this point I think Hokomoko is just pushing him, which will probably be the final assault. It's hard to tell. And no more defensive Ravens. That's all they want to use it for. Pure defense. They're probably really paranoid about getting counterattacked, and their ground army is perfectly fine, so this is actually a really good move. I think they're probably going to be fine, and that'll probably be the game. Flipstep desperately trying to hold back, but unfortunately crashes do not hit ground, so they are not the most effective unit in this case. There are the Wolverines, which help. And of course the crashes are there because there's a good chance the Ravens or the Phoenixes will be coming down here to help out the Ravagers. There's a pretty good shot of that happening. It's not happening right now, but it very well could. Instead, they're actually being used more frontline. But hey, as these forces push forward, it's more likely Hokomoko will attack with air, but the Crashers staying behind kind of wisely, not getting hit by the Ravagers. Unfortunately, there isn't much to actually fight the Ravagers with from Flipstip's side. Flipstip's focusing a lot on the anti-air. And on Slashers. And once again, Black Dawn, I think this... No, it's not RPQ. That was explicitly built. That was an emergency built Black Dawn. Which... Still hasn't been reclaimed. Neither Black Dawn wreck has been reclaimed yet, so... That's 640 metal on the table. No, 600, 720 metal on the table there. That would almost pay for the Black Dawn. Reclaiming those two Black Dawns. I mean, you get a free Black Dawn. It's like three for the price of two. Good deal. I mean, it's a good deal on a Black Dawn, but it's still a good deal. I know, I'm ragging on the Black Dawn. There's probably a use I haven't seen much of, but in this game, they have not done much. They've killed like two metal extractors and a solar plant. And died twice. So it's a 1 to 10 payoff there. Real economical. But what is economical, for real and not sarcastically, is this set of Ravagers here, which will be probably able to rush through. They could rush through just about now. I mean, there's a lot of static defenses being built up. That is an issue. I can see the reluctance that makes sense. That's where I put a Thunderbird in, actually. Get a Thunderbird or two, stun all this stuff, and then rush in with the Ravagers and kill it all. And there's that Black... Ooh, actually, you know what? I take back what I said about the Black Dawn. The Black Dawn is actually going to do some good here. Because those Impalers had no shot. Like the Black Dawn... Okay, now I see what it's for. It didn't have a use before because it didn't have a unit to counter before. Against stuff like Ravagers, tough, meaty, mid-range, or mid-line units that you just push in there as your assault force. Nah, Black Dawn does nothing. But against high-priority single targets that you're going to have one or two of artillery stuff, penetrators, Impalers... Tremors, that sort of thing. Black Dawns are awesome because they deal a lot of damage to a single target. They don't deal a lot of spread damage, not effectively. I mean, they can because that is how they attack, but 
Now, in practice, it seems like you really want to go for the assassinations. Not so much countering an assault force, because there just isn't the firepower to effectively do that. Not without, especially not without getting killed by crashers, and that's going to be the third dead Black Dawn. And then, like, one more missile shot. Which never comes, so the Black Dawn is safe. How about that? A Black Dawn that actually manages to go out on a mission and not die. Well done, Black Dawn. You're the most successful of your kin. You actually paid for your... Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, because it killed two Impalers. That is by far the most successful Black Dawn in this game. Holy crap. I mean, it did just about turn about turn around my analysis of Black Dawns. But that aside, I don't know. Hokomoko, they do have a lot of weakness in their back line. The problem, of course, is getting stuff back there. But if something does go back to deal with Hokomoko's rear expansions, that, that's naked. There's nothing there at all. And there's a good easy path around it, too. Obviously, it'll be caught on radar, but Hokomoko has been getting a little overconfident. They're expecting this entire force. I mean, it's a good force. Don't get me wrong. But that's the only thing really defending Hokomoko from a big counterattack that would wipe out their economy. Is the fact that Flipstep has to focus on that. If Flipstep found a way of getting enough defenses to be able to hold that off, then send something else around here, a few Banshees or something, to get rid of all of these metal extractors, that would... Uh, that wouldn't turn the game around immediately, but it would definitely give Flipstep a way back into the game. Yeah, they're pretty much all naked. There's hardly... The, the plateau where the main base usually is, that's the one spot. And now, Hokomoko wants to finish it. Hokomoko's not going to be able to finish it. Flipstep's actually been really good about getting up their defenses. That's what I mean. Flipstep's got a pretty strong defensive line. They just need to have something going into actually assault. That's the main thing they need. If they get their assault force in, that probably do the trick. That's the one thing. Like, if they don't get their assault force in, they're kind of screwed. But if they do get it in, then that's just going to be the game. That's it. That's done. But it's not happening because Okamoko really wants to make sure that they don't get accidentally counterattacked in the process. Because, like I said, that's their only defense force is these Ravagers. And, okay, and all this stuff, too. There's actually quite a lot. So, three dozen Ravagers, along with three Phoenixes and three Ravens. Not a bad mix. Although, with the cra some of the crashes committing suicide unproductively, it may actually not be that great. Okay, yeah, they're, apparently we're both laggy. I mean, that makes sense. Apparently this engine's kind of laggy, and I'm noticing it, too. It's not a frame rate thing, it's just stuttering. Okay, actually, the frame rate's not great, either. But it's like, I say solid, the frame rate's fine. Move in, frame rate's fine. Move out, frame rate's fine. Move around, frame rate just craps out for some reason. Not sure what's going on there. I really don't. I almost feel like it's my fault somehow because of the camera, but it might not be. No idea what's going on. At any rate, this, this is getting into stalemate wars. Which is unusual for Isle of Grief, this map. I mean, you'd think it would, too. It's actually... I'm not surprised, given the construction of the map. There are, are a lot of choke points. There's a possibility of this pretty much from the start. But... It's... Yeah, and Hokomoko. All right. Hokomoko's just saying that it's their fault. They're the ones that basically made this go on longer than it necessarily had to. Because they wanted to make absolutely sure they had an overwhelming advantage before winning. And Flipstip really scared about that whole possibility. Obviously not going around the back to try to deal with all these expansions that are completely vulnerable. And the Brawler's getting in, now finally managing to deal some damage. Black Dawn not able to do all that much, but the Brawler's... I mean, the Brawler's are a good choice against the Ravagers. That's actually a nice option. Oh! Oh, Hokomoko apparently saying that they screwed up as an engine developer. I see. Well, as long as they fix their mistake and the next engine version has it cleared up, then that's fine. These things happen. I mean, it is a beta engine version. That's how things work. As long as the stable 104 release does not have these lags, and also fixes the reflection issues with the water, then it should be fine. I mean, it's very hard to see on this map, but there are reflection issues with the water. There have been since 103. I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah, there have been for a little while. It's been reported, I think. At any rate... Dante up front. This is Hokomoko's overwhelming advantage. I mean, they've had an economic advantage for the last 10 minutes or so. Flips to... Not a massive economic advantage. Flipstep has managed to get someone back in there, but that Dante pulling in. Not able to push in enough, though. And the, the Ravagers getting 
cold feet again, or cold treads as it were. With the brawlers coming in on the side, this might actually, this, I don't think will turn it around. I mean, the brawlers are all together, they're getting napalm, they're getting ravened, they're getting torn apart. I mean, that was definitely the right way to defend against that. Ultimately, not a whole lot of damage dealt. And with that, there we go. The Scorpion trying to help, but everything has been knocked down right outside of Flipstip's base, and that is game. There is no way out of this. Like, on top of the catapult, that doesn't help either, but yeah, that's basically it. So, there's GG. That's the game. Pretty, isn't, I mean, for all the lag, I'd say it went okay. But I do feel like there were some strategic errors that can't be blamed on lag either. But it happens, so... Yeah. Oh well, so it goes. Lag happens. Anyhow, next game will presumably be not so laggy, or at the very least, if it is, it won't be anywhere near as long. It will be a game between Flip Tip and Arphelius on Lonely Oasis. Which will be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.